so the the hole would be small. How big would the hole be that you have to drill and then replace with this piece? It's only one hole. Well, um, yeah, the device we're working on right now is about it's about an inch in diameter, um, and your, your skull's pretty thick, by the way. So your skulls are mine is for <laughs> sure. Hey guys, George Mesa, Third Eye Edify Podcast, here to bring you a short about some technology that I'm sure you're aware of, but I think it's worth discussing it from a little bit of a nerdy perspective, because I am known to be a nerd in certain respects for sure. And um, the clip at the beginning, just a quick taste of the kinds of sacrifices you're going to have to make with your own body just to have this, what can only be described as potentially experimental, brain chip. Yes, people have had brain chips. Yes, it's been attempted. Yes, it looks sleeker than ever, thanks to good old Elon. But you're already digging into your skull. You're placing it in your brain. And that's just the start. Now, normally this would be a five-hour romp, but what I'm really here to do is to describe what I think are going to be the very obvious and potentially the most hazardous problems that come up with placing something into your brain. So let's have a quick look at what exactly we're dealing with here. I brought it up in episode nine, Transformers, but um, this is the image of the Neuralink. Many tiny strands that go into your brain, and I guess that circle part is where um, it gets placed in your skull. So they are going to have to move, remove skin and actually drill out some skull. However, they're going to do it. Last summer looks like this. Today looks like this. This is a pretty recent image. Um, I'm not sure what the biggest differences are, except that instead of putting something behind your ear and having these little wires go into your brain, it's showing four, but there's many more. Maybe this is just showing you, hey, it can just sit right on top of your head, skull, which is thick, apparently, according to Joe Rogan and Elon. And yeah, it's thick, but is there enough real estate for you to give to this chip? I don't know. Putting things in and out of your body is just cause for alarm in general, in my opinion. This is an image of the battery charger. Um, this is a work in progress. I'm not standing by any of these images being exactly what the final release is. I'm sure they won't either. But do you take it off of your skull to charge? Do you place this on your head while you're sleeping? What if there's a power surge in your house? Just a thought. And from their website showing that you have to actually place these tiny fibers in synapses and to guide and gauge action potential. So keep these things in mind as we discuss the rest of what I'm going to show, because I can't even believe I'm talking about this. Not because it's like, oh, the future's here. The future's been here. They're just finding a way to make it palatable for human beings. I mean, if you eat fast food all the time, you're totally into destroying your body as it is. So why don't you just do this? And then you can play music in your head and control Bluetooth devices from your Neuralink. I'm sure there's nothing that could go wrong with that whatsoever. Just think about all those Alexa devices and those ring doorbells that get uh, taken over by a hacker. Suddenly they're in your house, you know, in, uh, in machine, not in spirit, not in uh, body, but in spirit machine, of course. And that's just one of the millions of things that could possibly go wrong. And I assume will be very hard to avoid at first. And like I said, the nerdy approach will hopefully give you some perspective on this. So let's, um, let's talk about the words that are going to come up the most now and now and forever in this world of body modification, digital body modification, chipping and such. So first word that comes to mind is glitch. And the definition from Wiki is a short-lived fault in a system, such as a transient fault that corrects itself, making it difficult to troubleshoot. Difficult to troubleshoot. A problem with something connected to your brain. Doesn't sound perfect. Particularly common in the computing and electronics industry. In circuit bending, 
as well as among video game players. More generally, all types of systems, including human organizations and nature, experience glitches. Has this definition been... I picked this wiki one on purpose. They're saying that nature experiences glitches. I'm rolling with no on that one. I, leave me a comment, please. Like, subscribe, and share if you think this is an important conversation. I don't see that being provable right now. If there's a glitch in nature, it's an unexplained phenomenon. Or maybe somebody does know the answer and they're keeping it from you. That's all I can think of as far as that goes. It's hard to believe. Etymology is that it's German for glitchen to slip or Yiddish, glitch, glitchen, I guess it's really similar, to slip or skid. So to have, you know, when you're walking, if you slip and you keep, you know, you kind of lose your balance, you keep walking, there's a glitch, right? Is that a glitch in nature? I mean, it's, I don't think so. And uh, John Glenn, third American in space, he rocket for rocket ships said glitches were spikes or changes in voltage they were calling them glitches so now what is a bug and um to my knowledge because i was in school for computer science about over 20 years ago for a little bit and the the bug that i was told the initial name came from there were switchboards and multiple switches to make the computer work because one and zero on or off for the switch is all you get and it's still just binary code running your brain, by the way. We don't work on binary. There's no new way to code. There's no new way to understand computers at their base level. Assembly, maybe, if you want to call it that. <laughs> it's a very primitive thing still, computers. Regardless of how powerful they are, it's still working off ones and zeros, on or off. And these switches would be the ones or the zeros up for one, down for, for zero. And a moth apparently got caught in one of the switches. And the bug is that the switch couldn't go to zero because the moth was in the switch, a bug. So maybe that's true. I Maybe maybe some, somebody out there knows better. I wasn't able to confirm it. I tried. So a bug is a defect in design, manufacture, or operation of machinery, circuitry, electronics, hardware, or software that produces undesired results or impedes operation. Sometimes what might be seen as unintended or defective operation can be seen as a feature. That takes us closer to what I know from the video game world and the many glitches and bugs that have been exposed over the decades. Naturally, that's the way it goes. Um, that's the nerdy thing. We'll get to it in just a minute. So what about hacking or kludge? It's an ugly but a quick work around to a problem. It's a fair definition. David Linden, a neuroscientist from John, Johns Hopkins, who we revealed was basically started by the skull and bones, says intelligent design proponents have misconstrued brain anatomy. He says, the transcendent aspects of our human experience, the things that touch our emotional and cognitive core were not given to us by a great engineer. Rather, at every turn, Brain design has been a kludge or a workaround, a jumble, a partiche. He also cites evolution as part of our brain's ability to feel love, memory, dreams, and a predisposition for religious thought. Now, sounds like this guy's on the other team, in my opinion. And he's trying to make sure you think that your brain works off of hacking and glitches to produce love and dreams. I think there's a lot more to the story and that this person is working off the same playbook that all of the rest of them are. Make you feel like there's no point in you doing anything except working your job and being a wage slave. This is exactly the kind of thought that leads to that. Without a doubt. And um, I believe he was quoted saying, maybe I'll play it. If I were to... Something, I'm paraphrasing. If, I, if we were to rewrite the brain from scratch we wouldn't do it any any way like it is now. Meanwhile, we're still working off a very primitive zeros and ones system. So give me a break. Yeah, I'll play the clip. Let me play the clip. And that's amazing. You say, yeah, that's amazing. But that doesn't mean that when you lift the hood and look at how it's built, either anatomically or electrically or genetically, that what you see is well-engineered. No, it's a freaking mess. 
in there. And it's a freaking mess both at these biological levels and a lot of times it's a freaking mess at the behavioral level. We have two visual systems in our brain, a subconscious one and a conscious one. We have two auditory systems in our brain, a subconscious one and a conscious one. No engineer ever would have designed it like this. And then the information from these two streams has to be fused to create our behavior. It's a total kludge. It works pretty well. Our brains are pretty impressive in what they can do. The engineering behind it is completely insane. It never is what anyone would have designed given the chance with all the time in the world on a blank sheet of paper. And he says, if we were to rewrite Nobody's asking you how you're making a brain. We can't make one. And we clearly don't know how it really works in full detail. We know all the parts, but if we really knew everything about it, we could reproduce it. That's not happening. And this Neuralink is going into your brain, assuming that they do understand it enough to place something in it to make it better. The Trojan horse is that, yes, maybe it can help a blind person see. Maybe it can help a paraplegic walk. I, I'm not going to say that isn't good. But that's a desperate times call for desperate measures. Not, I need to have Bluetooth accessibility in my brain. I'd like to control my television from my brain. That's not where this should be going. Ever. Yeah, it's a video game controller. Great. Will hackers be highest on the food chain? Suddenly? If they're looking for data and all they want is your attention, a hacker can grab your, potentially, your thoughts. Is it possible? It's not impossible. Now, let's get a little nerdy here. Because as the evolution of video games passed from 2D to 3D, the types of glitches and bugs that we got from, technically speaking, hackers... Um, really got pretty crazy. At 2D, it's an easy manipulate system. It's very basic, very rigid. And the glitches and hacks are easy to repeat for the most part. Now, once we get to 3D and beyond, everything's much more complex, crazier results on average as far as the way the glitches go, and tougher to manipulate, tougher to get every time um, certain things. So code can easily be hacked by a programmer or anyone with enough practice. And this is the main point of this entire episode. I want you to think about that. You can be hacked. Just like Yuval Noah Harari says from the World Economic Forum. They're hacking the brain. They're hacking you. They've been hacking you. When the TV turns on, that's a, that's a way to hack your brain. To grab your attention. Just turn it on in a room full of kids or adults and see the reaction. Talk to somebody while they're on their phone and see how much of the 100% of the attention you'd like is there. It's not. And what is a common reaction when the device goes haywire, by the way? You, when you experience a glitch or a bug, what's a common reaction? You hit the damn thing. Are we going to be hitting the neural link in our heads? Maybe. And who knows where that can go? I mean, that's just a light thing, of course, but come on. There's clearly going to be things that are called patches or updates to the program that runs the Neuralink. They're not just going to create it, set it and forget it, and then it works for everyone for the rest of humankind. That's not how any program works nowadays. Just think about the updates to your computer, whatever kind of computer you have, whatever kind of phone you have, which are computers also, they are getting updated all the time. Patches, patch notes for all of your apps. How many times have you seen patch notes, bug fixes? This is going to happen. And much like when a video game gets released, they can test it as thoroughly as possible. Once millions of people grab it, then the bugs and the glitches really start exposing themselves. Then the so-called hackers come in and they figure out all the little tricks to actually fool the code from time to time to do things they don't want it to do. I'm going to show you some examples of that in just a moment. Just to get you thinking, not to show you a video game, to love video games, I'm gonna I want you to get you. I want to get you thinking about this stuff. Um, trust the 
science? Trust the designers? Trust the architects? Picture the Matrix has the architect of the Matrix, who was in control of everything. Almost everything. And um, I think we're not guaranteed any of this. That's really where I want to stand by this now. We're not guaranteed any of it. And keep that in mind, please, because I'm just, this is like a cry for just a call to action is what this is. I won't normally say this on the show, but don't do this. Especially not version 1.0. Because there's going to be updates, there's going to be improvements, there's going to be lots of things to figure out once they start using it on more and more and more people. If a blue t- if you're driving down a street at 30 miles per hour or even faster, your phone can tell you, oh, there's a Bluetooth uh, hookup right here. And even if it passes for just a moment, it can find Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections as you're driving. Your brain is going to be sending and receiving signals you never wanted it to. It's already doing it. How much worse will it be? My amplifier for my instruments would pick up police signals from time to time. Are you going to suddenly get a dispatch in your brain for, you know, fire department, police department, who knows? Anything. Anything goes. Will certain electrical pulse impulses affect it and, and give you nerve twitches and stuff? Your body is electric. Electric. It's not just fluids and bones. It's a lot more than that. And um, they're entering the synapses. This is more than dangerous. And if you trust that Elon and his team are doing everything they can to make sure none of this happens, even if they are, it doesn't matter. The most expensive budgets ever for any video game, still, those games have crazy bugs and glitches all over them. It's impossible to avoid in this very primitive system. It's impossible. And I'm stating that as... Yeah, I I was doing a little bit of programming. I didn't go too far with it. I did it for about two years. I know how those things work. You ever sit at a traffic light and wonder, why isn't this light switching? And you have to kind of move your car back and forth a little bit to get that green when it's late night. Yeah, there's a little bit of a glitch. Maybe the sensor didn't catch you. These things happen for every type of system there is. Every type of computer system there is. So be careful. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to present to you uh, the nerdy portion of this. I want to show you and quickly discuss as you're watching it a few of the most impactful glitches that have really ever happened in the history of video games. Three in particular, and one of them is just like another offbeat um, side mention. It's a quick, quick video. And I just want to show you these just to get you thinking with your natural, normal brain in your fully intact, not drilled into skull, I want to show you how how manipulatable these systems are to the point where you can fool a video game from the first level to take you directly to the end credits as if you beat the game. This is this is a very scary thing. It means that that code which was made to never do that bypassed the entire game. Now what does that do for us? What can be bypassed? What would happen? I don't know. It's a pretty insane topic, and I really don't hear anyone talking about it that much. I'm sure that's being out there, but I don't hear him saying, oh, well, bugs and glitches are never going to happen. I didn't hear that yet. Did you? Leave a comment. All right. Take a little ride with me through Nerdland, as I mentioned, as I discuss some of these glitches that we've had over the years, these bugs these hacks that have actually really manipulated video games beyond your wildest dreams, trust me. Take a ride. All right, the first game here is Super Mario Bros. 1. As you can see, this guy actually went through the wall and goes into a pipe. This pipe is supposed to take you to level 4. Instead, it takes you to level negative 1. And it produces a different version of this underwater level that you see here than the game has normally ever had. So, pretty crazy. You can glitch through a wall, 
and it, then the pipe does something it wasn't supposed to do. You would think these simple games wouldn't have something that, that weird, but here it is. All right, so now we're watching Super Mario Brothers 3. And anyone that knows this game will see that we're in the very first level. That Mario Brothers glitch from before was the level, the second level of the whole game. So now he's doing very specific. It looks like he's just randomly being, just doing random nonsense. He's actually impacting the code of the game by doing this. This is hacking. This is hacking directly from the normal standard input of the game. And input will be a big factor in the Neuralink. I really believe that. It's a fun little thing he's doing. It's actually hard to time, I imagine. It's commendable. Bottom line is this. He's about to let the shell get hit, and now look at this. The game glitches, and we're at the end credits from the very first level. Pretty crazy. So this is now The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is a pretty well-regarded uh, game on the Nintendo 64. We're in a 3D environment now, as you can see. And uh, this was released, I think, 1997. So we're getting closer to the 2000s. But bottom line is this. He's at essentially the first large section of the game. And again, it looks like he's doing a bunch of random stuff. He's not glitching the code at this point. He's just looking for a way to slip through a door that you shouldn't be able to. Suddenly, he's at the very end of the game. And uh, one last little nugget here from Tekken 5, a fighting game I much adore. And as you can see here, what happened is that he put the character in a position where, unlike a very balanced game like this, which really they do work very hard at it, you can't get out of this. This is called an infinite combo. It wasn't meant to be there, but it was figured out. It's just another thing I want to mention, is that this can happen. Anyway... Thank you for taking that um, path down memory lane for me because these things really popped into my, my mind, my naturally unfettered mind, non-chipped brain, that no matter how high of a budget you have, no matter how many people on the production team working on the game to make sure these kinds of things don't happen, they're going to happen. They're going to be found and they're going to be manipulated. I didn't leave the audio in those games, but some of those were done in live settings and there was actually applause because everyone that really knows it says, I can't even believe it. Believe it. These things can happen. And I hope this got you thinking. Whether you were or not, whether they make it compulsory or not, I really don't think it'll happen that quick, but who knows? If there's a social credit score, I'm sure you'll get big points for putting in that brain chip. Prepare yourself for that. And prepare yourself for a lot of great things coming by the end of the year and starting next year. I'm going to have more interviews and a lot more content and, and much more. More stuff than I can even say at this point. But bottom line is this. If you found value in what I'm doing, please subscribe to Rockfin because I'm going to be putting exclusive content there. You get access to everyone else. There's so much there. And if you can't afford that, share this. Share it with someone who you think will either learn from it or appreciate it. Because that helps me a lot too. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you real soon.